Right, um, it, it's day four now. Um, we've obviously, we've put the rods in, we've made the base, we've insulated the base, we've floored the base, we did the back wall. Um, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do this wall, we're gonna do this wall, which has got two openings for two windows. And then we're also gonna build the front wall as well, which will have the bifold door opening in as well. Um, right, so what we're gonna do, um, I put this 5b2 down there because basically the front wall will be constructed from 5b2 because obviously we've got the thickness of the steel, we're taking the weight, so we want to beef it up a little bit and some, use some extra timber. But that's going to happen a little bit later. So what I've done, I've put it down in the position there. It's completely parallel to the back. So what I've done, I've marked the floor at both ends where it's going to go. So that then will create the length of that wall and the length of that wall. And when I fix them two walls, I've then got the room for my front wall to sit on there still. Um, and a complete 5b2, like I said, so you can carry the steel, carry the weight of the roof and everything. So this video is going to be pretty monotonous as far as this wall is concerned. Um, but I will still talk you through it in case you've not watched the one previously or you've missed some of the detail as well. Uh, there was a guy who messaged me and he says, I I'm not quite sure where he was coming from. If you just come here, David, he asked me about the... the the end board being a different size and why didn't it fall centre on there? But it does because your first upright is zero, then you've got four, eight, 12. Now 1200 is the centre there. So your first board would be fixed on the left there, David. Yeah, and then fix, fix, and then you would have centre of board there. And then because I ripped the, the, the board down to 1200, I've got four, eight, 12. So that would be the next centre of my board there. Uh, sorry, the end of my board on the centre of that timber. And then this piece there is just a rip to the to the right size. So hopefully that's explained that to you, mate. Um, sorry, I can't, I can't remember what your name was, um, unfortunately. Sorry. Um, so th this wall here now, we're going to do this one a little bit different. We're going to build the wall, but on this end here, I'm going to leave the OSB hanging over 90 mil. If David just comes here and I'll explain why. The reason why I'm leaving the o o OSB hanging over 90 mil is I want it to slide past this timber here so that I can fix it into that timber. So when I tie that wall to that timber, I can also tie the OSB to there and then we can wrap the membrane round to have a full seal. Um, but that, that's that. So what I'll do, um, again, we're using minimum tools. Jen has persuaded me that I should carry on and nail them by hand. So foolishly or not foolishly, I've said I will. Um, 4B2 CLS, that's what we're using for the walls. Um, and, and that's it. So I'm not using the chop saw, I'm using the cordless um, Makita circular saw there. I'm using the speed square to cut them. Um, I'll, I'll try and explain it a little bit, but what we're going to do, we're going to stick it on the little stand we've made there as well and put it on time lapse at some point as well. Right, so I'll, I'll measure my timber. Um, Again, if you're watching this, um, I did say I am going to give the stuff away that I've used, the hand tools, the ox hand tools, and I will do. Uh, the problem with Instagram is the video like last night's was an hour and a half. Instagram won't let me upload an hour and a half video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little post on Instagram every night. And if you like, share and follow that post, then you could be winning the ox stuff. But the link, if you're watching this on Instagram or anything like that, the link to my YouTube is in my description. Okay, so David, you've come over here a lot. I'll just show them one more time how to use the speed square. I've marked my distance there. That's what I want. I've set my circular saw to the depth of the timber so that I ain't going to cut my fingers off. I'll just cut them if I do have an accident. I'm going to set my speed square like that, using that part of it there to catch on the timber like that. And of course, that has then created a right angle. The bed of the saw is sat at a right angle as well. So that will cut that nice and square. So what I'm going to do, you can just get in there, look, David. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah just get my blade there. I know I'm good. And that's that one. Cut my second one. So what I've created there, that's my base plate, that's my head. I'm just gonna cut that again now. That's my base and that's my bottom. Right, let me show you how I'm going to set this out now. Um, if you watched yesterday's, you will realise that I do them at 400 centres. Um, and it didn't really matter what side I started on that, but this side it does matter. So for clarity and to make it a little bit easier for yourself, if you set 
the timber up in the direction it's going to go, which is going to go this. I'm using the sheets to square the wall, so I want an overhang on that side. So it's difficult to create a square with an overhang on that side. So I will start boarding from this side and work that way. And with that in mind, I'm going to start my 400 centers from that side there. Um, if, if it's a precise measurement, you'll see me use a pencil. If it's not necessary to be so precise, I'll drop to the Sharpie, um, simply because the eyesight isn't that great for the pencil. So that's what's going to happen there. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll write on them. And then if you're watching it, you sort of know what's going on. So that's my base plate. Lost my train of thought there, base plate. And that's my head. I can write, honestly. So that's my base and that's my head. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll separate them like that. And then I'm going to cut my studs then and my studs will drop in there and I'm going to start hand nailing them. So I've showed you how, I've, David, you want to swiss around there a little bit? You all right? Um, I've showed you how to use the speed square. Um, like I said, I'm not going to give you out all the measurements for them because if you want all the measurements, they are available in my build pack. Um, the link is in the description of the video. Um, and everything in there is that you will need to build one of these basically. Right, I'm waffling again. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these. I'll get them cut, I'll cut all them, um, I'll drop them in and then we'll start nailing them. Um, and then once I've nailed them, it's pretty straightforward nailing them. I've showed you what I'm going to do by nailing them. Um, and then what we'll do then, we'll go back onto um, video in, take it off time lapse and I'll show you how to put the sheets on one more time so you can square it up and of course the end piece over there. Um, so that, that's the wall there, uh, that's, that's built. I don't put my noggins in on the floor and I'll explain that when we come to, <laughs> to the installation. So what we're trying to um, create is, let me try and rack this right David, can you see there now look how I've racked it, I've forced it that way look yeah, so it's no longer a rectangle. Um, but what we're trying to do is create that rectangle. Now, the way we're going to create the rectangle, because we want it to be a rectangle, so when we stand it up on that level floor, it will be plumb then, because it is a rectangle and the floor is level. So, can you can see the movement in that there, look, I can rack it quite easily. So, like I said before, in my build packs, I explained to put the wall up first, then OSB them, um, simply because it's, it's, it's a lot heavier lifting these on your own, stuff like that, and, you know, I'm afraid that somebody might try and sue me so I'll try and make it as easy as possible for one person to do on their own but in this instance I'm going to rack it myself right enough of that these sheets have come I said before they're imperial rather than metric so what I'm having to do is run them down to 1.2 which is obviously metric and the same as a plasterboard So there we go, that's that run down now. What I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna flip that board because I've created a rough edge for myself there. And that there, as the board sits now, is how I want it to go down because this up here is a perfect right angle. Um, and I'll explain how racket, I did explain the other one, but I know some people don't watch these in order. Um, so I'll explain it yet again. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag my tape down like that at 400 and that's why i flipped it because i've created a rough edge and you get splinters in your fingers so that's my 400 mark that will then and now allow me to see through the osb and see where the timbers are so that i can fix them onto the frame i'm also then going to mark the length of the board where i want to cut it off because obviously it's an eight foot board it's too long for the wall so that will be my cut off point, but I'll, I'll cut that when it's, um, when it's on the floor. I'll cut the lot in one go. I'm also going to mark the centre of my base plate so that I can fix my nails through there. Again, that will allow me to see through the board. So that's my sheet. That is going to go down on there like that. You see, you see, it's way long there, David. Can you see that look? Yeah, so... Where did my 63s go, mate? And in that cardboard box. Um, like I said before, we've not brought the um, nail gun. Um, Jen's persuaded me not to and do it by hand. So, Dave is having to rip the nails down. 
63 mil ring cut nails. We're going to put them in the sheet. We're going to nail them every 400 or so down there. And that is going to be absolutely solid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get it dead on that corner there. Can you see that, David? Yeah. Right, so you can actually see now. Look, if you look down there, David, I've got that dead on that corner now. And it's in line with that. Not quite dead on corner, is it? Let's pull up. Pull up. There we go. Right, so get that dead on corner and this this is what i mean by racking them so that's in there now that can pivot um we get this long length now down the wall like that what i'm going to do then i'm going to go up this timber and nail it every approximately every 400. And just see that timber there don't know if you can see that data it's just curled in a little bit so what i'm going to do Get my nail started and just pull it out to meet it. There, that's now made that timber straight. I work my way up there. Approximately every 400. If I were blasting away with nail gun, this no doubt would be fixed by now. Right, so that's that leg secure it's nice and straight down there it's on that corner there but you can see look see that there david the frame is racked now that frame isn't square we know the sheet is square so the frame isn't square so the way around that now get that started there can you see that i'm flush there david yet there so what'll happen now i'll go down there and then nail that. So that frame now is starting to become square. What I'll do now, look, I'll just put one in the middle. I explained this before. You see the timbers look, sometimes you get a bend in them. So I'm just going to hold that so it's centre. And that's good now. So what I'll do now, I'm just going to work my way down there. I know them lines are on my 400 centres, so when I nail when I nail them, it'll go straight into the CLS below, which of course is what I'm aiming for. If you miss a couple, it won't be in the world, you know, you, you're going to get the majority in. We're nailing them approximately every 400-ish, something like that. Um. It's very slippy, OSB. Um, it's seems sliding on it quite easily, so you have to be a little bit careful when you walk on it, especially if you've got one sheet on top of the other, because it will slide out from under your feet. And you'll be gone. So you can see there, I mean, you can see that every nail is hitting the timber there because I'm having to bray it in around and it just punching through the OSB. Right, so at this point here now, that's my line I've marked from the centre of my timber or thereabouts. That's my cut-off line. So that's enabled me to see through that timber and know exactly where that bottom plate is. I'm just going to send them back on a little bit of an angle what I don't want is one to curl out and it will hold the base plate off the floor. That's not what we want. Um, if you like these videos, then leave a comment. I, I do try and reply to comments, but I don't always get the time, obviously. Um, you know, um, but I mean, please, please as well. Not please, please, but just please. Um, follow, subscribe, you know, hit the bell because we do sometimes a live as well. We'll do a live as well in... Maybe this month at some point, so that'll be interesting. We've done one before. Right, so that's that first sheet down. This is my next sheet. Um, it's very similar. I'm not going to bore you with this. So what's going to happen? I'm going to nail it there first. I'm going to rip it down, obviously. I'll nail it there. I'll pull it tight to this sheet. 
I'll nail it there and then I'll bum 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 nail all the way up there like that and then I'll look at this corner here and I'll rack the frame so it's square with that one and then what we'll do we'll come back off time lapse and I'll show you how I'm going to do the end overlap it and then we'll carry on from there so there's my two boards my wall's nice and square now I know that so what I need to do now is cut this rip here so again I'll have my right angle there that'll be my machine edge and this bit there I'm going to let it fly over 90 mil, and the reason because of that is, let's imagine that is this wall here. So that'll be that wall there going the other way. So that's why I'm letting it hang over 90 mil, so that it can fix to this wall here. Um, and that's the reason behind that basically. So what I'll do, I'm going to set my saw just going through. I've explained that a few times why I'm just sending it through like that. Um, I want this here to be my right angle which will go over there so I know my width of my board I need plus plus um, 90 mil so I'm gonna mark that down there like that so that's where I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna also mark my 400 center for my timber that will enable me to nail to that center timber I'm also going to mark the center of my last timber because obviously once this board's on top I can't see the uprights anymore but I need to know where they are so that's that I'm now gonna mark the board to length again because you can see they're all hanging over there can't you um, I'm gonna actually cut them all off to length at the same time um, and again mark the bottom timber so what I'll do now if you bought a build pack or if you're gonna buy a build pack every bit of timber is used in it so you need to remember that and you need to remember that all your offcuts all your offcuts are your uprights all your offcuts are your OSB you need to stack them up and save them because all them offcuts there Davy of that CLS yeah they will then create the noggins in the wall so everything gets used again this piece of offcut board there may get used on the front wall so I don't want to cut it to length because obviously the front wall is a different height to the side and the back wall so I'm going to rip it down first that will then go on the, the pile, saving pile over there, and then I'll rip this one down. Right. We're not looking for perfection on that cut because at the 90 mil it hangs over, but don't forget we've still got 11 mil thickness of OSB, so it's not going to protrude past the back wall. Also, you can see I've just set the saw blade up fractionally deep, so what will happen now, it's scored through that board, but that board is still usable, so we've then created a little table for ourselves for working on. So that's my board. I'll now get it into place and we'll start nailing it and I'll show you the overhang then as well. So let me just put it there so you can see it better. So when that's in position, obviously fixed up there, my line then indicates where the center of my timber is. So when I nail that, I'll go in there. That line there also indicates that I've actually measured it a little bit off there. So what I'll do, I'll send them nails through at an angle like that so that they go into that timber rather than risking them coming out that side there as well. So what I'm gonna do is get this roughly into position like that. There we go. Get a nail in there. So I'll just show you something as well, like, because you can see there now. So that, that's in there. So what we need to do is obviously tie the straight leg in. So when I pull that across there, you can see a gap there. Now what's happened there is I've not run down like as accurately as I possibly could with the circular saw, but it doesn't actually matter because as long as you're pulled tight up like that, you will still be fine, you'll still have the square board. So, you know, your <coughs> excuse me, your accuracy is getting your base in. Once your base is in dead level to the millimetres, you can be a little bit out here and there, and it's not going to make an iota of difference because the whole of the frame, like the back one was, will be completely plumb when it's sat on the wall. So, there we go. So that, that's in there now, that's tied into that leg, 
what I'm going to do now, look, can you just see that there, Dave? It's just proud a little bit there, look. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, so I'll get that nail in there, get it started. And there, just, just, it's just bouncing back. So I'll use my foot. There we go. So that now, once I've finished nailing that up now, that wall will be perfectly square. A perfect rectangle. Oh, certainly within tolerances anyway so that's it I'm going to carry on nailing that and then I'm going to get the circular saw rip the bottom off um, and then we're going to do the membrane and the slate lats so I'll pop you back on the um, time lapse and then we'll jump back onto normal video and when we're um, membrane and the slate lighting it Right, so that, there's, my, there's my wall, it's, it's um, ready to be, have the breathable membrane on now. The breathable membrane is a roofing membrane. It allows the building to breathe and it also keeps moisture out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let the front hang over a bit like that. Um, we're going to staple it down. Now I did explain in the other video that a stapler is something you will need if you're going to put the vapour barrier on the inside, because it's a nightmare otherwise. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that lined up there like that. If it's really windy, you're going to have it all on trying to do this. Trust me. Right. So. Just going to push it out like that. It's simply to keep any moisture from entering the building. Um, what will happen is if you get moisture build up behind your cladding, it'll just settle on this and then run off and then disappear and dry off in the summer. Uh, not in the summer, in the warmer times and stuff like that when the airflow comes up because we're double battening it. Right, I need to stop talking crap. Right, I'm going to let it overhang because I want to wrap it around there and finish it properly. So I'm going to give myself about six inches, eight inches, whatever that is there to cover and wrap around that corner. Um, and then I'll use my other sheet. The reason why we use two different sizes is economics basically and there's obviously a little bit less work in doing two rather than three so there we go you don't need to use a stapler for this you can quite easily use a couple of twist nails that you've obviously got from your floor it's all right David there's loads in it maybe it just didn't come out then just pull it up to the top there get it somewhere right again it don't need loads in it we did originally wrap them once we'd built them but we just found this is a lot easier we can get some the slate battens on as well so I'll just squeeze that one out of the way again cut myself off six to eight inches there it's not critical because we're gonna trim that up and tidy it right so I did explain in the second video but um, you need to watch that if you want to, me to explain the airflow issue so I've cut these slate battens the, the final cladding will be vertical so that means to have double slate battens we need vertical then horizontal and then our cladding will be vertical so the first row I've already cut these to length these are cut to the same length as the OSB sheets again everything's written out in the build pack it's 13 different sizes you can adapt them as well if you want right 90 mil nails that's what we're going to fit them with again we've only used impact drivers what we use David impact drivers circular saw and an angle grinder so far trying to stay away from power tools so that you can do it on a budget so I'm just going to keep that flush with the top there you can see where I'm fixing that I don't want to fix it there because that's no good to me because I need to, that to tie into my wall so I need to fix it there into that upright I'll keep it flush at the top get that one fixed work my way down see, see the nail indicates obviously where the upright is keep it flush at the top 90 mil nail what the 90 mil nail will do, it will go straight through the slate lat. What you need to do in all is don't nail it like that. Get it somewhere you think it's about 400 spacing. And then what will happen then? 90 nail will go straight through the slate lat, through the OSB. There you go. And into the timber stud, which is what you want. We'll keep it 
So, um, obviously these are pivoted at the top now, I've cut that one short, I'll explain my mistake in a minute and why it doesn't actually matter, um, but they're pivoting. So what I'm going to do now, if David can look under there, I'm just going to locate where the timbers are. I mean, you can locate them because I can see the nails. But what I want to do is nail them about four or five inches up like that so I'm not going to come through this piece of OSB. So that one there and that one over there, I've, um, it looks like I've done the 100mm rule, doesn't it? I have, I've done the 100mm rule twice over there, but it's not the end of the world and I'll tell you why now. Because what will happen is, I'll miss that nail. That's hit another nail below us, that, just for you. Just so you know. There you go. So what will happen is now, David, you stay there, mate. When the other slate buttons go on, horizontally. So my first row will start 150 mil up anyway from the bottom, which is there. So it'll miss that, and it'll miss that one that I've miscut. So, it, like I said, that isn't actually an issue. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to work my way down here, um, looking underneath, finding the centre of the timber, getting it nailed, and then I'll go down all the middle and I'll nail them every 400 each one so they're securely fixed to the frame. Okay, so, right, um, i put the vertical buttons on. I haven't put the horizontal buttons on for a simple reason is when this wall comes up, I want to fly the horizontal buttons through and, and cut them off flush with that wall. Also, this wall is stepped back short so that the front wall can be the full length of the building. So, I'll, again, I want the horizontal buttons to fly through um, to marry up with that there as well. So, what I'm going to do now is lift this up and get it into position and hopefully be able to fix it. So I'm gonna stick that block under there like that. So if I fail, my fingers are still good. Um, I'll get this one under now. Like I said before, I I'm happy enough to do this. If we get more than three meters, I'd be getting a hand, a hand but um, just a nail sticking out there. I've also been round and I've checked there's no nail sticking out the bottom. And I've also got no nails sticking out here because obviously once I get it up, I don't want the problem um, where I've forgotten a nail and I've got to take it back down because once it goes up, it goes up. Right, so what I will do, I will get my impact driver at the ready and get a couple of screws. You might have seen day two, we put some props in this. We've now took the props out, obviously, because they're going to be in the way. But that wall is nice and secure. It's not going nowhere. Get myself a few screws ready. Um, get my impactor ready. I put it in a position where it should go down or thereabouts anyway. So, oh yeah, what I've forgotten to do is when that goes up, I don't want this felt to be in the way. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to staple that back like that, just so it keeps out of the way. And I don't end up trapping it, which of course will cause me a problem. Um, what we'll do once I get it up, I'll get Davy on the trestle and he can look down the top and you'll get a, an idea of how it locks into place then. Um, right, so that's it. Let's let's go for it. It's somewhere near. Um, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll get re ready as well. Lump hammer, David, just because it'll need pushing across, won't it? I'll put the lump hammer there. Like I said, there's nothing to be gained by doing it yourself. I just wanted to show that you could. So get your partner, your wife, your husband, whatever it is, to come out and give your hand on your neighbour. Well, that's that's gone up nice, hasn't it, David? Yeah. Right, if David comes over here now, again, it's managed to just balance itself, which is good. So you can see what's going to happen now. Um, what I want to do is slide this wall up to there. That OSB then will cloak around the back of that there, and we can then fix the OSB to that timber. Timber, fix the OSB to that timber, and also fix this timber into that timber, which will tie all the corner, and then we'll wrap the membrane round. So what I'm wanting to do is push that up there. Now I tell you what, a little, a little tip that you might want to do. 
I mean, I'm not confident there, me and David stood next to that wall, there's nothing holding it, but we've obviously been in this situation before, and we know it's good, don't we, David? We're not afraid. So what you might want to do is just get a little off-cut timber, just sit into position like that, mark it, and then you know um, that when that timber slides that way, then you know it's pulled this way far enough. Um, obviously, it might deviate a little bit, because if you've not cut your floor quite straight, so let's say your floor's like that, you're always... Uh, you're, floor is like that and then this wall is going to find its straight point so it might not be quite on that but as long as it's somewhere near you're good obviously the other side you can visually see it anyway so what I'm going to do now I'm going to try and slide that up and get it into position right can you see what's happened there Davey we're about 10 mil off aren't we yeah right so the way you can rectify that now is I'm happy that's not going to fall so I'm just going to leave that there now um what I'm going to do now is just get this timber here, my impact driver. Like I say, if the floor is slightly wibbly wobbly, wibbly wobbly, that's a good term, isn't it? If the floor is slightly all over the place, then what will happen then? It's starting to go there. Let's see that, David. What I'll do just to wreck there, there it's, it's fine at that. No, what I don't want to do is take over next door's fence, which obviously won't be ideal. Let's go again. <laughs> Keep it rolling, Davy. Right, so the way I'm going to get round that now, it's leaning on his fence. Um, like I said, there's nothing to gain on doing it on your own, so let's pull it back up. Davy was on the go already then. So what I'm going to do, I'm pulling that over tight like that. And I know it's in a good position there because I can feel the OSB touching the wall. So. I'll just put that screw in there now and that will stop that falling over again. You can see there now, if you look at the bottom, David, because it slid the way it has, it's actually quite a way off that mark now. So we know that we need to pull it across considerably. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to check this end. That end's not bad at all. I just didn't want it to kick out like it has done there. So you can see now I'm a good 40 plus mil off that line there. I'm going to get myself a screw ready. Right, so I've screwed that band to them uprights. So there we go. Pull that across. I can feel that OSB has now hit that. That's gone in. I've obviously stopped myself from being able to screw that now. But what I'll do, I'll get that out of there. That's fixed now. I'm going to go down to this end here now. And David, if you just come and look at this, look. You can see that there. Yeah, so we're going to again push that across like that. You see there, so it's nice and tight up to the bottom there. This is a little bit easier because I can pull it. And we're good on that. So what we'll do, if you've seen the other ones, you see there, look how it's slightly out like that, David. As what it is, is that, that floor is not quite, I'm not quite cut it as straight as what I could have done. It's not a problem, not an issue at all. I'm going to go around this, get these screwed down. The reason why I'm screwing it here is to actually pull it to the floor and make sure we've screwed secure. And then I will go down and nail it then as well. So that's, that's secure to the floor. Now I can take this one out here and make sure that that is pulled tight to that. And then hopefully, if we go up here, we'll be able to see the detail. I don't know if you can just jump up there, David. If you can just point down now and look at that. Can you see that okay? Okay. You can't see it, so we'll, we'll just hold it like that, okay? So that OSB is now there, that will OSB will get fixed to that. That upright timber there will get fixed to that upright timber there, and that'll tie the corner in there, so... David just jumps down now. What I'll do now, um, I showed you the screw snapping and the reason why you want to be using nails, so... The reason why I'm putting screws in there is just to tie it across. 
but I will go back now in a minute and nail it all the way down. Right, so that, that wall's securely fixed. That one was plumb, that's plumb. Obviously that's got a wobble on it. What we'll do, we'll put a prop in that wall. Um, not right now, there's no need to, it's not actually going anywhere. And then soon as I've been back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna nail the base plate to the floor completely. I'm gonna nail that stud to that stud completely. Then that wall there is as far as we can go on that one. And then we're gonna jump on this wall as well. And I'm, there's two window openings on this, so it's a little bit different. So I'll show you the detail on that as well. Right, um, this, this wall here, it's got two windows. So basically, as viewed from outside, that will, that will be the, um, the wall. There'll be a full height window there. Uh, there'll be a full height window there. And on the inside, there'll be a TV on the wall there in the center. So what we're gonna try and do is work it out so that we can get it centralized internally. Um, it won't be quite externally because obviously the front wall is thicker, but internally, visually, it'll be right. So how are we gonna do that and what are we gonna do? Right, that there is the five by two where my wall comes to. So I'll measure that there. Um, it's near on 10 foot. So that there now is the center of my wall. So that's the center of the internal wall. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I know the TV is, how much did I just say the TV was, David? Is that what I said? Let me just check on that. Um, we know the TV is, I can't believe I've just forgotten that now. Um, is that what we said, David? Nine, you measured 9.75 and 11.00. Oh, I put a mark on floor, didn't I? 9.75. Yeah. No, oh, memory's bad, isn't it, man? Right, TV is 975 mil. So that's the centre of the wall. Um, 975 divided by 2 is 487 and a half. So what I'm going to do is mark 487 that way. 487 this way. and then just double check my measurement there and we've got 975. So that there is my TV, which will be center of the room. Now I know my windows are 550 wide each, but what I want to do is leave a 560 gap. Um, 560, yeah, a five, five. So what I'm gonna do, they're, they're 550 wide, but I'm actually gonna leave 565 gap just so that I can fit my window. And if the building's racked slightly, for whatever reason it's moved or anything like that, then I can still plumb my window up and we're all good there. So with that in mind there, so that, that's my TV. Um, of course, we've got some architrave, so that's like 40 mil there as well. So that'll be the frame there. And then obviously my window wants to go there somewhere. So with that in mind, um, if I put my window there, then we've got a big nib there and we've got a big nib there, but I don't want to risk it being too close to there. So what I'm going to do is give myself plenty of room, which is there. I'm going to measure 565 back off that. So that there now is 565. So that there is my window opening, which will let me get a 550 window in. Right, so we want it to look parallel and even and symmetrical. So I've got 330 from that side of the wall to that side of the window. So what I'll do then, I'll measure 330 there. So we'll have the same nib of wall there and there. And then what do we say, 565. So that'll be my five. Six five. So that there now is my window. So you can see what I've done there. I've I've centralised it. I made it look parallel. It'll look nice visually from inside. It'll look nice from outside as well. But inside it'll be sort of like perfectly parallel, which is what you want when you're sat in the room. So that's the window. That's the TV set on the wall in between the two windows there, and that's the other window. And that gives me a nice little corner nib there to put on there. So that, that's good, I'm happy with that. So how am I gonna now create this wall to marry up with what I've just done? Um, I'm gonna cut myself two lengths of 4 by 2 which will be my base plate and my head plate. Um, so I'm gonna cut them 
I'll, I'll just keep it rolling, David. What I'll do, what I'll do, because obviously this stuff's just going to bore the life out of you. Um, I'll fast forward me going backwards, forwards, getting the wood, cutting the wood. You've seen how I cut the wood. I'll cut the wood. Then I'm going to sit it down. I'm going to mark it up and show you what, how we're going to transfer the marks on the floor to the timber so that we can build our stud. Right over here. Then that's my base plate and that's my head. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm just going to write base and head on there just again for clarity. So if you're watching this, you're not quite sure what's going on. It might give you a little bit of an insight better than what I am doing. Right, so I'm going to put that there. Yeah, I'm looking at my marks. I'm right on my length. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark that there. Both timbers are butted up, look, yeah, so the, the mark is the same. So that will be the edge of my window. So that means I want a timber there. We'll have a timber there. Now, so they're not centres anymore. That's where my timber will go, like that. But that there is the critical part. This one over here, again, the same. So that's where the timber will go. So that there will create the window. If that makes sense. My TV goes there, which is we're all good and happy about that. Um, again, that there is my window, and that there is also my window. So, right, but we still want 400 centers so that the sheeting will work properly. I'll move that rake because that's an accident waiting to happen. Um, right, so I want my sheet again to fly over. And, and nail in there. So I'm going to take my 400 centers from this side. Um, obviously, that's fine. That's fine. 400 center falls there, but there's a window, so there won't be one there. 400 center falls there, there won't be one there. There's one there. So I'm back on that one there, which is 12, 16, 20. Again, there's one there. 24, there isn't one there because that'll be in the window. 27, there's one there. There's one there, and again, there's the end. So, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at one stud, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten studs in this wall. Um, there was nine in that back wall. It's the same length wall, but of course, because of the way it's worked with the windows, we've got an additional stud. So, what I'll do, I'll fix them. Um, again, I'm going to spread them now. I'm going to cut my timbers, going to fire them in. I'll get them all fixed, and then we'll talk about sheeting. So, I'll put you back on time lapse. Um, so you can see the wall structure there, so that opening there and that opening there, this will be a tilt and turn, that will be a fixed pane, the full height, um, our doors and windows coming at 1950, uh, the reason for that being is um, uh, head height 2.5 and all that, I've explained it in a few of the videos before, um, so what I'm doing, I'm creating my opening there, I've got a little bit of extra on it, it's not a problem. Rather than packing that out, I'm just going to put that straight in there. And I'm going to fix that. I'm just going to pop a couple of screws in there. It's, it serves... It serves no purpose apart from just filling it and then I can OSB to it. And of course, these screws are coming straight through. But what I'm going to do, if David comes over here, look, you can just see David. I'm just going to snap them off. Like that. That's the thing with screws. Um, the snap. Um, obviously the, the nails don't, but you can see there they snapped off really easy. So that, that, that'll be the opening for that one there. This one here is the opening for there. Um, I've created a 15mm width on it so that all the window will go in and I can plumb it up and I've created a gap at the top as well so I can drop it in nicely. So we're all good there. I'll be happy with that. Um, so what I'm gonna do, get that screwed up like that. Um, I'm gonna drop you back on time lapse. I'm gonna cut the sheets. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna square from, let me just break these off before I forget. I'm gonna square from this side here with my sheet. I'm gonna get my frame so it's rectangle and then when it sits on the floor, we will be all good. Um, but and, and here, of course, I'm going to leave it 90 mil hanging over and drop it that way. But I'm also going to take some measurements for these windows. I'm going to mark them out and then I'm just going to rip them out with a circular saw and then offer it up. Um, so David will drop you back on time lapse now and we'll cut the sheet. 
Um, there's my full wall now. So obviously I've boarded over my windows. And the reason why I've boarded over my windows is because I'm going to cut the window out. Um, but I want the full sheet as one piece. So you've still got the strength of the sheet or at least part strength of it anyway. Um, so I've marked, I've marked them up. So with a bit of luck, this will be right. <laughs> Obviously the curvature of the blade, I've got to go past the line a little bit. Battery's gone on that, I'll just change batteries quickly. Um, are these all charged up there, David? tilt and turn opening you can see there I've gone past the bottom what will happen is I've kept the, the bottom um, the base plate in because obviously I want to create a straight line but that will get cut out once it's fixed down so I'll do the same with this window as well now what I've done I don't know what the hell I've done with this I've mismeasured it completely so I do know that they're not in the right places so what I'm going to do I'm just going to cut a piece out Just to see there, I, I've mismeasured completely, so that seems to be the line over there. I don't know how I've managed to do that. Not quite sure where that one is. I think I've measured from the other side, to be honest with you. I think that's what's happened there, David. That's fine there. Um, I'm going to gauge it and guess it's there. Look at that and see where it is. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm too far over there, so I'll just drop that across a little bit more. decided to nail the bottom to that so there you go so i mean it's warts and all with this i've mismeasured completely but that's absolutely fine that's a little bit shy on there but again it's not going to impact on it whatsoever um just a case of mi mismeasuring really so what i'll do now i'll clean that off um and i'm going to drop it back on time lapse i'm going to get some uh, breathable membrane over it i'm going to do exactly the same as i did with that i'm going to put vertical battens on it what I'm going to do, I'm going to fly the vertical, um, I'm going to fly the membrane straight over the windows and then when we do get the roof on, that'll protect it from the elements. So there's my window elevation, you can see where the windows are, I've felt it over them, that'll keep the elements out until we get the windows here. Um, obviously I've let my OSB hang over 90mm at the end there, I've just stapled that felt back so it doesn't get in my way. Um, I'm going to try, if this one falls that way then I'm screwed because Obviously the fence saved me on that side, but this one I haven't got the luxury of the fence. So we'll see what happens. If you just look at the bottom there, David, can you see, no, no, this side, mate. Can you see how the OSB is still on the floor? Yeah. yeah. David, do me a favor. Can you see that nail there? Just watch your fingers, though. 
Good man. Are we, are we clear now? So what I've failed to do on this one is sweep it, but never mind. Just get oh, I just broke my microphone. Is the sound still going up and down? Right. Okay, so it's, it's dropped down that side over there, but obviously it hasn't on this side. There we go. Give that a little kick over. Right, so what I don't want now is this to fall. So obviously that's going to cause me no end of problems. I'm looking down at the bottom there. Um, I'm on far enough there. I'm going to just keep hold of that wall. If it was a windy day, you might be having a few issues now. Um, just slide that. Slide that up if I can. Right, I know there, I can see it slipped off on the bottom for me. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a screw just up in here, just to hold the top and then that will be all right. That's got a grip in there now, so that ain't going to go nowhere. I'm just looking at that one there. And you see there, Davey, look, it couldn't be tighter really. Yeah, it's on, it's on the OSB there, so I'm just going to put a screw in there. What I'm going to do now is go around this side and kick it over. Look at that, I've just stood up, mate, comedy style, just missed my face. Um, there. So that now is over tight, I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is go in here, get some screws in there, and then we know it's not going to go anywhere. Got one in there. We know this one's good as well. You see, he just pulled it down a touch there. And what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to screw where the openings is because obviously at a later date, I'm going to cut this bottom plate out, but we've left the bottom plate in. So that um, we've got a nice straight line still, which the bottom plate obviously creates. So again, I'm not going to screw the bottom plate where the window opening is because that will be coming out. I will nail this like I did previously. I have no chance whatsoever of getting a hammer in here, so I'll put two screws. And then again, just going to look at that and make sure it's in, in the correct position for me. Um, what I'll do, I'll just get a couple of trestles. I don't know if you'll have a well, step-up trestle, whatever you want to call it. Um, there, I mean, that's good. That's pulled to that. That's nice and tight. I'm going to go down there with a few screws. And then what I'll do then, I'll obviously go and nail it. So that's, that's fine. Um, obviously I'm going to go along now and nail them, but I won't nail where the windows are going. I'm going to stitch that down there with some nails as well. And that's my free wall. So if Davey just comes in there, I'll just show you what we've done. Just stand that wall there, Davey, mate. So as per our drawing, we worked it out. So we've got a, an even nib there and there. And then we've got our 550 opening, which will let our 500, sorry, we've got our 565 opening, we'll let our 500 window drop in there, 550 window. Let me get that right again. We've got a five, 6.5 opening for a 550 window, so that's 15 mil extra. So if the wall is a little bit on the skew, then we can still plumb up the window and get that right. And of course, the TV is going to sit centrally in between them windows, so everything's symmetrical as per the customer's requirements. Um, I'm going to nail that now, um, and then I'm going to drop on the front wall, which is different. I'm going to use 5v2 on the front wall, and we're going to get the steel up as well. Um, that wall's up, that wall's up, the back wall's up, obviously. Everything's tied in apart from these now, these front walls, um, which I'll put props in in a minute, but I need to build this wall so they'll be in the way. Right, what we normally do, um, what we'll normally do is build 
a little stud there, a little stud there, put the steel on top and string the bottom through. Um, but because I'm on my own, just for a bit of speed, I'm going to put the bottom timber there. There you can see it there. It's a full length. So what I've done, I've worked out where the centre of my room is. I've then found the size of the doors. I've put an additional 15 mil on the size of the opening and I've created two end pieces which will support the steel. So for all intents and purposes, this is what I'm going to make now. I'll have one timber there, a double timber there, plate going through the bottom, double timber there, timber there, and then a head there and a head there. So obviously this won't be fixed at the top, uh, but it will be fixed at the bottom. So that'll run through nice and straight for me. And then I'll lift the steel up, which will sit on there. I will have propped these two walls plumb, um, and then I'll fix the steel. And then I'll obviously fix the side walls to the front wall and everything will be right, plumb and square then. So how am I gonna make these? Um, what we want, we want, um, two double timbers now we've dropped to the 5b2 because obviously we're going to support the steel and the front of the roof and um what have you there so we want the 5b2 on there for a bit of extra strength so what i want to do is nail these two together they will take the weight of the steel then um these these two plus that additional one there so i'm going to get them dead flush at the front and i'm going to i'm going to nail them and just make sure that they're flush with each other because it'll cause me problems down the line otherwise. They're a 90mm nail, um, they're 45mm timbers, so obviously 245s is 90 so they won't go through. Obviously, if you were hand nailing these, you'd have bought yourself some nails rather than stripping down the Pazlord racks. But that one's nailing like that. I'll then flip it over. I'm then going to double nail it down that side, so that one will be nice and solid. What I'll do then, I'll fix my top on there, so that'll be my head. That will get fixed to that. Um, I'll do the same with that side as well, and then we'll fix it to the bottom. I've already pre-marked. That distance there is the distance of the head. So that'll get fixed to that and then we'll offer it up. But before we'll offer it up, I'll lift it out. I'll get myself some props on these walls to stop them splaying out like that. We'll get this in, I'll then prop them and then we'll go for the steel. So Dave will drop you on the time lapse now because all I'm doing basically is gonna make this frame. Um, so there's my frame. Obviously it's gonna flap about if I try and pick it up like that. So that's not gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to put this timber, that timber there basically is cut to the same length as that bottom. Normally we wouldn't do it like this, um, but because I'm on my own, I'm going to offer it up like this in one piece. So that timber's the same length. So if I cut this, if I fix this rather um, to the end of that timber, like so, then that would mean that they're spread the same as the base. Or thereabouts till I can get it up. I need to get it out because um, I want to get my props in to support these walls here. For those of you that are um, very alert and observant, you'll notice on the time lapse there, I actually hit my finger. Um, there you go, can you see that, David? It's actually throbbing, proper cartoon style. But that's that. So David's just going to step back just so that um, I don't hit him with this wall. So I want to get this wall out now. There you see, I can pick it up now, look. So that, that, that there will be my front wall. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get it out of the way. Um, I'll put that there, it's not going nowhere, is it, David, no? Right, what's next then? So, I need to support these walls and get them braced, because at the moment they're flapping around and obviously I, I, that's no good to me. So, I'm going to use these props here. So that's one. That'll support that left wall. Support the right wall with this one. Again, needs to run the opposite way. So 
So that will support that on the wall then. Let's, so let's get them two fixed first and we'll jump back and make a couple more. Right, David, you might want to come in here a little bit just to get this. Right, the name of the game then is to get this wall as plumb as we can. So what we're going to do there, normally what we'd do is we'd fix it to the wall first. Somebody told the level on it and then we'd go um, fix to the floor. But I don't have that luxury here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to see how far out it's leaning, which is quite a bit. So that prop there, I need to keep back from there so I can slide it in. So we know what's happening there. I'm just going to put that there like that. Can you see how it's a 45? It's sat flush there, David. Look, it's sat flush. Well, it will be in a minute. Right, you want to screw your screw vertically. Can you see now I've pulled off that wall, David, yeah? So I'm going to screw that in there. Like that. And then that there now is floating, so... What I can do then is going to get that in there, drop my level. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a problem for me here now because I can't actually hold the wall, the level, and screw at the same time. I know that's good there, so I'm going to use my foot, pump that across, see if I can do this. Or I might have to revert to something else. It needs to be dead right. Let me tell you what we do. It's, it's real time, isn't it? So... Just crossing boundaries as we come to them, little problems. And they get up high there, which will give me a better position on that. Use my leg against that. Put my foot on that there. And then pull that across there. It's important that you get this right, so take your turn. There, oh, there we go. So that one there is now plumb. I'm going to do the same with this side now. Have a look at that there. It wants to push out that one. So what we're going to do with that one is just offer that up there like that. That'll be a good position there. Get myself another screw. Again, vertically down with the screw. Be all right there. Ooh, I've probably gone way too far with that. Look, mess that up completely. There we go. So that's that. Um, I'll get my screw started. A bit more difficult with left handed operation. Um, have a look at that level. I'm pushing it out right so. What I've done, I'm going to push that like that. Get it on there. Stick my level on there. Are you, are you in there, Debbie? Can you see? Yeah. There we go. So, both of them now <coughs> are, are solid. Look, they're nice and solid. They're not going nowhere. Yeah, so what I can do now, I can offer up this wall and then I can fix them because we know they're plumb. And we obviously want these to be plumb. So when we offer it up now, which we will do, just see if I can lift that up myself. There we go. Right, you'll notice that this wall is considerably lower than the wall it's joining onto. And that is because what we're trying to do is put the steel on. The steel will be then higher, which is exactly what we want, um, which will then create our pitch on our roof. So, I've got my hand up on that now. What I'm going to do now is just put a screw in the bottom. Which will hold that in place. Put another screw in the bottom of this one. Pushing it back to that wall. So that's fixed. I'm going to, well, it's not permanently fixed, but you know, it's fixed. What I'm going to do then is take this off. Which I have done. We'll save that piece because that piece will be getting fixed to the steel. We'll talk about the steel in a minute. Right, David. Um, 
We know this wall is plumb this way. So what I need to do now is fix this wall to the, that wall. And then we know we're plumb both ways, if that makes sense. Because that wall's plumb, it's fixed, can't go nowhere. So once I fix that to that, it means that will be plumb as well. Which is obviously what we're trying to achieve here. Um, if David just goes around here, he'll be able to see what I'm going to do now. Look, so I've cut this wall bigger, as big as the OSB, because I'm not going to put OSB on there, because obviously I use the OSB to square that sheet off. So this wall now needs to be in line with that OSB. Can you see at the top there, David? Yeah, you can. Which it is, yeah. So what I'll do, put a screw in there now. Um, again, I'm going to get my step up so that I can get up and see it. You need... When you're doing out like this, <coughs> excuse me, you need to be in a good position where you can actually see what's going on. So, is that flush there, David? You can't see. I'm actually a little bit lower than I was hoping. Yeah, but I can't see, can I? <laughs> right, okay, so how are we going to resolve that? I'll tell you how we're going to resolve that. We're going to get a piece of timber. Like I said, you need to be up and seeing it properly to know that you're in a good position. I'll fix that onto there. Fix that onto there. And what I'm going to do now, I'll just climb up there so I can actually see what the hell's going on. Right, so there now, I'm in a good position now. That's it, that's exactly where I want it. There we go. That's dead in line with the outside of that OSB, which is what I want. That'll get wrapped around there. We're all good there. And come off there now. So what I'll do, take this back off. The good thing about these torque screws is the heads don't go on them, so you can reuse them. And you know, you fix that, take them back out, reuse it, fix it, take them back out. What I'm going to do, I'm going to screw that all the way down there. But of course, as we've discussed, the screws are not sufficient. Um, so what we're going to do is going to put nails in it as well. Right, you can see that there, look. Is that wobble on that, David? We are going to resolve that in a minute. But what I'm going to do first, I'm now going to fix this one to that wall there. And then my opening will be plumb. So, um, put them back on time lapse, David, because this is boring and I'll fix that. And off we can go, yeah? So, I've fixed them to them, I've fixed that to the floor. What we'll do, we'll cut that timber out uh, very shortly, I'd imagine. And we'll just get a handsaw and cut down there and we'll take that out. So, now we've got this issue there where that, that there's a bit wobbly. It's probably near enough plumb, but not quite right. So, what we're going to do, we're going to now plumb these two cheeks as well. The way we're going to do that is. Again, I'm on my own, so I'm going to look at the bottom of that and decide that that's in a good position there. And what I'm going to do then is just put that screw under there just to hold it in place. Just stop it falling like that last one did. Um, and then here then, I can go, you can see we've used this as a prop previously on another job. Get that fixed in there. Grab the old level that I will be giving away. The levels, the levels themselves are spot on, actually. I can't fault them. Um, all the rest of the stuff, the hammers are good, but the hammers are going to be a little worse for wear, I guess. But, you know, still a decent old hammer, that, and it'll go in relatively good condition. Right, so I'm ready for that. I'm going to get my level on there now. Let's have a little look at that. And that's... It just wants pushing out a little touch. Um, so what I'm going to do with that, how am I going to hold this and this? Um, I should have brought some clamps. David, have I got a clamp in the van? Right, okay. Um, I'm just going to go get a clamp. Just stop it there, David. Right, so I've obviously got a clamp in the van, so that's good. Um, handy bit of kit if you're working on your own. So what I'll do now, I'll clamp that timber to the level. On the level to the timber, one or the other. Which one are you going to look at it? Oops, it's all right, mate. No worries, no worries, David. So... Um, I mean, that's not far off at the moment there, is it? It's not much at all. In fact, I can't quite see that, David. Where's my glasses gone in there, do you? 
It's all right, Paul. I found them. It doesn't look bad at all, does it, David? Right. So let's have a look. Let's get up there. Like I said, you want to be up on it. Um, I'm just going to push against that there with my leg. Right, okay. That's too much. Right, we're good with that. What I'm going to do with this one, though, I'm just going to put a second screw in it. Because what's going to happen, um, I'm obviously going to put steel up on here very shortly. And I want it in a position where I can actually not get the clamp off. There we go. Um, I want it in a position where I feel safe and secure because this steel is a bit of a beast, a bit heavy. Um, and a one man job. I mean, you can see that one there, Dave. Have a look at that one. I've not even touched it. But because it's fixed to that wall, that wall's square and plumb. So it's already looking pretty good where it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um, let me see, I've got some screws in my pocket. So again, just gonna pop a screw in. Tell you what I'll do, I'll just pop it there, look like that. Just to hold it temporary, so I can leave it, walk down here, get this one screwed. There we go. Now I can take this one back out and get that one dead level, which is slightly out a little bit. There. Right, so. Just move the timber so we don't go back in the same hole. There we go. Again, I am going to double screw that simply because I don't want it to fall on me when I get the steel up. Right, okay. So the steel beam, right. Um, loads of people have messaged me, why are you using a steel beam? Why don't you double timber it? Why don't you use a flitch beam? Steel beam isn't overly expensive, um, but it provides great strength. Um, the way we do it as well, it, it, it just works for us, it's good. Um, it, like I say, it provides great strength. We can, we can um, span a decent old size. I've fit a bifold doors before, and a couple of mil deviation, your doors are gonna start binding. So the steel is a good option. Obviously, you've got the weight of the roof on there, you wanna hold your doors as well, especially if your doors are top hung as well. Um, Right, so that's all solid, I'm happy with that. Right, my next issue now is, I wanna get this steel up into place. Um, I've now got a mass of props here, so internally it's gonna be a problem for me, um, which we normally do it internally. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it externally. Um, I've got these two offcuts of wood, like I say, save all your offcuts. Um, you will be using the vast majority of them. And I'm gonna put that there, like that. And the reason why I'm putting that there is when I lift this steel up, I don't want it to roll off if I'm struggling with it and fall into the room. So that now will stop the steel rolling back into the room once I get it up into position. If I get it into position or if I have a massive fail and have to call somebody to hand. But like I say, get a mate round, get your wife on it, get your husband on it, whatever. Right, so that now will stop the steel falling into the room. Um, so let's, let's talk about the steel. Right, Davey, follow me out here, mate, and I'll show you the steel. Of course, you've seen the steel. Right, the steel beam, it is a hollow section beam. It's 180, no, it's not, it's 160. It's 160 high, it's 80 mil wide, and it's five mil on its section. What Davey's already done for me, he's marked up the length of it. Um, we're putting it on the full width of the outside of the building. He has also filled it with rock wool for me. Um, you are going to get some um, cold bridging from it. So the way to reduce that somewhat is to fill it with rock wool insulation. The way he's done it, he's tore up little bits of insulation and he's jammed it down with a bit of slate batten, a bit of roofing batten, like that. And he's completely filled it from both sides. Um, so that's good. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut it. Um, we need... What do we need, Davey? We, we need to cut it, obviously, because it's too long. Yeah, they're on my head, mate, aren't they? Did you bring my air defenders? Some what? All oh, right, Paul. Okay, so health and safety and all that carry on. Um, you don't want these hot sparks going in your eyes, that's for sure. Um, and it's quite noisy as well, so you might want to protect your ears. In fact, you should protect your ears. Okay, so that's your safety warning. Um, I can't be held responsible if you don't pay attention. 
and do your own safety guidance. Right, that's in. We're good with that. We've just got a metal cutting disc in there and a put on my safety glasses. The reason why I've spun this way around is so that all the sparks aren't going there because they'll burn the hole in the felt, which is not what I want. Right, okay. We'll move that there because when that steel falls, it's going to drop on that. Here, defenders on. Okay, David, you want to come to this end? Right, so you can see there, David has completely compressed the insulation into the steel hollow section. This is exactly what I wanted. Right, that will be sharp, it will also be hot. Um, so you want to watch your fingers on that because it will be sharp. Right, next issue is now we want to get this up and onto here. Now, you come around here, David. Um, I don't know what the actual weight of this is, but it is fairly heavy. Um, it's not something I'm going to high up by myself um, up to that height in one go, that's for sure. So, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to get my steel onto there. I'll sit it on there, that's a good height. Then I want to get it to about this height, which I can, I feel I can manage. Yeah? So, at that height there, I want it to be pretty level. Well, the reason why I want it to be level so it doesn't slip off, basically. So, I'm looking about that height, which is 42 inches for myself. And then once I'm on there, I'll be able to stand on there and I'll be able to get it up to that height. Let's say 64, so 42 and 64. I feel I'll manage with that. Although we miss, not 42, there we go, and 64. Right, so I think that's manageable to there, but we will see. Right, next thing I want now is, um, I want to get someone to hold it, so that's gonna like, um, hold it in that height. Um, David, what did I do with um, the, the torque bit, you know, the um, the big bit for the 250s, any idea? Right, so we've got got, got the, the old 250 screws now. The reason why I want to use the 250 screws is I want to make sure that this ain't going to snap under the weight. So we'll sack off the 100mm screws. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so that there is where I'm going to lift it onto. Um, we'll, put, we'll put it about there, yeah? Um, that's that's what I'm going to sort of aim for. So I'm going to not turn that in my hand, don't worry. But what I'm going to do is get two screws in there. from past experience that them screws are pretty good and they're pretty hard to break um, so I'm gonna sort of rely on that but I'm also going to keep myself clear as well right problem problem next problem right that one there is slightly in the way do you think I can lift it to there probably can Carter okay right <laughs> Right, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go for that. See how we go. Right, next thing is um, I want to make sure that I've got a good solid footing to get these up. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Happy with that. I'll lift that steel up to there, then I'll lift it up to there, go across there, and, and that's it. So we're good with that. Um, now the steel is, like I say, it's quite heavy. I can manage it to get it to where I need to go, obviously. Um, right, so let's get it around there. Okay, so that's, that's position one. Happy with that, it's in a good position there. Um, I mean, the test of these now will put that up, I'll be able to see. That's not going nowhere, is it? I wouldn't have thought. That 
Yes, all right, get it to sort of the length I want it at. All right, we happy with that? This one I'm not overly confident with, but we'll, we'll try. Yep, keep my hand on that so it doesn't roll back at me. Okay, so we're in a position there now. Um, obviously that's higher than that one, so I'm gonna go back over that side and lift that up, otherwise there'll be too much of a tilt on that one there. I keep my hand on it there, I know if it's gonna fall on me. Okay, we're good at that. And there we go, that's the steel up in position. Right, my next question, problem is now, I need the steel to the outside because that will be where it will go. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna revert back to the smaller torque bit. I'm gonna get another two blocks on the outside so that I can push it the other way then and get it into its final position and then I'll show you how we're gonna fix it. So that went up quite successfully. I'm happy with that, it was a decent little, little go. So I'll get myself two of them off cuts. These off cuts will be your noggins at a later date, so do not sling them if you're going build pack route. The link for the build pack will be in the description. And don't forget, all this ox gear could be yours. You just need to get yourself over to Instagram um, and go for that. So that one's there. What did you think, David? Did you think that went up all right? Yeah, I did, to be honest with you. I did have give it a couple of nights for what to do it in one sort of take. Right, so that's... So we're all good now. Right, if you think about what we've done now, these walls are braced, the front walls are braced, the seal is sat on there, the steel can't actually fall off there. Um, because it can't go, it's trapped now between these two. So what I want to do is just push the steel to the outside of the build because that will be its final resting place. Um, you can see there, it's 10 mil too long there. Um, not because Davey's marked it up wrong, it's just because obviously when I'm lifting it up, it's moved left, it's moved right, and it's gone over there. So what I'm gonna do is get the lump hammer, and get that flush at that side. We did actually cut it fractionally short just to make sure, well it's 10 mil short, just to make sure we got it up and it wasn't in the way of anything. So I'm gonna centralize that, get that on the outside there like, like so. So there, there, that's in a good position now. I'm happy with that. What I'll do now, I'll remove these blocks because they, they're in the way, they don't wanna be there anymore. I'll remove them blocks. Davey's gonna put it on time-lapse while I strip this down. Um, no, he's not, anyway, it's pointless. What I'm gonna do is gonna strip it down. Um, remove them blocks. David's gonna go get me some tech screws and then we'll screw it to the timber um, and I'll show you how we're gonna do it. The steel that. actually is sat there, but obviously it needs fixing now. Now, the beauty of building one of these to our sort of like, our formula, basically, is the, is the, is the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Is the amount of fixings we don't actually use in variation. So we've got 90 mil nails, we've got 63 mil nails, we've got 100 mil screws, and we've got these tech screws as well. So that's four different types of fixings. Obviously we use plastic board fixings. Oh, so that's five, and then we've got the 60 mil screws. Six types of fixings as far as what I can remember um, for the full build. So these are roofing screws, um, roofing and cladding screws by Techfast, they're from, um, a tool station, they're 110 mil. They will go straight through the timber and into the steel. They require a bit of bit of pressure, but they do do it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure that, that steel is pushed across there, which it is, I'm happy with its location, its final position. You see there now, so that's now fixed that steel to that timber, which is then fixed to the wall, which is then fixed to the floor. Right, lost me a bit. Right, so that now is not going anywhere, not that side anyway. So I'm gonna put another two in here, and then what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the other side. 
Um, and then we'll be good. So that there now has secured that. We know it's fun, the opening's good. Right, so that's that fixed. Right, so I'm just gonna explain one more thing to you while I'm here. Get rid of that bit. Stick that bit in. Right, these can come off now. Simply because that steel isn't going anywhere. And then I'll explain what we're going to do to the other side and why we're going to do it. Right, that's that. Okay, the steel's fixed. I'm happy to work on that. Took all my all bits and bobs off, we're good. Right, next problem is we're going to fit, put the roof on there so the joists are going to sit on there. So we could fix the joists directly directly to the steel, but that would require more fixings and specialist tools. So what we're going to use is some of these long lengths of 4v2 that we've already got. We're going to cut one to length like that and it's going to go all the way along over to that side. It'll be the same length as the steel. And what will happen then, we'll sit it flush with the bottom, we'll tech screw it to the steel all the way along and we'll fix it through there to the timber. So everything's starting to get tied in now, but then we've still got this issue up here so we'll get another piece, but what we'll actually do, we'll rip it down in size. Again, we'll tech screw that there. So we'll have a solid timber fixing across there, which when we put our roof joists on, we'll be able to put our upside down joist hangers and the outside down joist hangers upside down, strap the roof to that steel, which is strapped to the wall. Everything's tied in and we're hunky dory. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put one all across there, tech screw it. I'm gonna rip one down, stick it on there, and that'll be everything tied in then. So we'll drop you back onto time lapse and then we'll have an end of talk because David's going to start wrapping up now. Right, so we've got the walls up, we've got the steel in. Um, we've had a pretty decent day. We're going to get off home now. So the steel's in, it's secured. It's that's tech screw to that. So what, the joist will go on there now and the joist hangs will fix that. That will strap the roof down. We've got these props in. That's all fixed to that. The windows are cut out. You will leave these props in now until the roof is done um, because if you take them out now, then you've got a risk of the building starting to rack when you're doing the roof, walking on it. So if you get all the roof on, then you get it all boarded, then it all ties in and it's all square and then you can start thinking about taking these out. But they're doing no harm whatsoever stood here. So we'll have a little look around. I'll show you what tools we've used. Um, like I say, we'll keep into a bare minimum. Um, again, we've used the ox level now the ox level is is a nice bit of kit it's a nice level to use it feels solid it's robust it's a good weight so we're going to be giving that away again with the, the hand ox tool so we've used the ox level we've used the clamp which gave us a third hand really we've used the impact driver we've used the hand saw circular saw i mean that's that's going to do the majority of the work on this job we've used a framing hammer um which obviously hurts Bruised both sides, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. That's instantaneously better. <laughs> oh, you can't fit that. Um, we use the framing hammer to nail it together. Safety, safety precautions, air defenders, glasses. We've used the speed square as well. We've used the angle grinder to cut the steel. We've used the, um, have we even used that, Davey, or is it just out? No, we've used that. Yeah, Davey's used that to square the mark around the steel so we can cut it nice and square. So that's combination square. And we've used the lump hammer to break the walls across. So that's it, we're keeping to a bare minimum. I've obviously hand nailed this, which obviously is taking a bit longer, but we're not doing bad, it's day three. Um, so, if you want to carry on watching, then we'll day four tomorrow. We're going to try and get the roof on tomorrow. It's not supposed to rain tonight, so I'm not remotely concerned about that floor getting wet. 
Um, so yeah, that's it, please. Um, please. So that's it. So if you'd like to like, subscribe and follow, that'd be fantastic. Leave a comment. I'll try and answer it. Um, it's not always possible. A lot going on in my life at the moment, but I will try and answer it. Um, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. All been well. Um, so thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you're on Instagram, don't forget you've got a chance of winning all this Ox gear. Granted, it won't be shiny and brand new, but it'll still work and still get you a build out of it. Right, see you tomorrow. Thank you.